protected. Thank you. Jan Logie. Mr Speaker, I rise to take a call on behalf of the Green Party um, in this urgent debate, um, which goes to the heart of our country's ability to have confidence in our public service. And so far, I'm, I'm pleased to hear um, a lot of messages of support in the previous two speeches um, from the Labour Party and the government in support of the value of our public sector. Um, it's not something that we often hear in this House. Actually, I'm far more familiar um, with the messages of the public needing to constrain the public sector and how they're a drain on our resources when in actual fact they are the engine of a room of our country and enable us to address our social and environmental issues. And so what we have, um, the core of the discussion today is about the fact that the um, now convicted fraudster, fraudster Joanne Harrison, was able to um, defraud our public sector of over $725,000 and that good people within the public sector who raised concerns about her practices um, lost their jobs. And that there was, um, after her conviction, um, there was a review of the processes that were led by Sandra Beattie, who was previously um, a senior position in the state services. So, and that her report found that um, four, mem four public servants had been disadvantaged in the process after speaking out and raising concerns, and that um, while they may not have three um, may not have been made redundant directly as a result of speaking out, that the process relating to their um, redundancy was improper and that they were disadvantaged through that um, process. And it is very good to hear the Minister say so clearly that no public servant should be treated that way, because that is correct. No public servant should be treated that way. And we need, as a country, to ensure that people raising concerns are encouraged, actually, that we're encouraging people to raise concerns when they see impropriety or they hear advice that isn't based on evidence. We need that rigour and safety in our public sector to ensure that we have um, that our money is being spent well and that our services are the best that they can possibly be. So we need to encourage people to speak up and we need to protect them from any negative consequences for doing that. And that it's been discussed already that um, the Protected Disclosures Act um, enables and has three key purposes. So one, it's to um, enable disclosure and um, investigations where there is serious wrongdoing, and it should um, protect employees making disclosures and promote public interest. And so what we've seen in the situation was here is that people used that act, but they were not, in effect, protected. Um, and so clearly, we do need to review um, and update the Act, and it is great to hear that we seem to have, so far at least, unanimity of thought on that point. Um, I do think, though, and I hope that there will be consideration within the state services as well as within government of the wider issues around culture and how culture can create openings for certain behaviour and or protect against certain negative behaviour. And I certainly have been hearing from public servants for quite a long time now um, some very significant concerns about um, a shift in culture in our public sector. We've had reports, um, research that came out in 2012 of 7,000 um, female public servants that felt an extraordinary 43% of those surveyed public servants had experienced reported bullying in 
their public service life in their workplace. And I think we need to consider that because when people are experiencing bullying, their are chances that they are going to be able to speak up and be heard is reduced. So we need to be addressing that aspect of the culture. We also, I hear concern raised with me about increased managerialism within the public sector. That whereas previously, at least at one time, there was um, the culture of free and frank discussion was encouraged and people's particular knowledge was respected. But now we seem to have this very clear, um, stronger chain of um, focus up towards the minister. And people uh, who are mindful of their career opportunities are mindful of wanting to deliver, this is what I hear, for the minister rather than the public. And that we are hearing that um, that also is affecting um, what people, information that is being shared in the workplace. And that min people who want to have career opportunity will be limiting, wanting to limit damage. And that creates an environment where things is co are covered up and are stifled, and that is part of what we have seen to have seen here. And that people, certain people's managers' voices can be privileged, which we've directly seen, and there was the findings of Sandra Beatty, was that there were, um, I think that this senior manager had undue influence in the system. And I think that is what we are hearing for a concern about from public servants about much wider implications of um, the way that our public service is being run under this government through that increased managerialism. And there's been some people have spoken also about, which I touched on to begin with, about an undermining of the public service ethos about the sense of people being there to be servants to the public, which is really at the heart of a vibrant public service. It's not about um, you know, making the minister look good. That is not public service ethos. That is about a politicization of our public service. And we really need to be safeguarding against that. And though that kind of change in ethos is creating a culture that more readily enables this type of behavior to happen because it's undermining that sense of everyone being there for a purpose for the public. It makes it more about um, career advancement than it does public service. And we do really need to be speaking more about the value and the benefits of the public service and respecting the amazing work that is being done across so many areas in our country by some amazing public servants. And I also want to speak to another aspect that I've been hearing um, concern raised by public servants about, which I also think links to this, which is an increased um, risk aversion and a sense that um, of preventing scandal. And it's not by preventing scandal from making sure that a scandal never happens, but a shutting down of information sharing, which we've seen the Ombudsman's report around the operation of the OIA as one aspect of that. And we've got, so it's kind of, it's, this seems to be developing into this culture rather than exposing things to the open air um, so that we can look at them and understand them and consider them, there's much more of a silencing and a hiding and a preventing things coming out into the public and in many areas, and we have far too much evidence of that. And I think that creates an environment that is far more readily likely to um, support corruption 
And while we're doing really well in the Transparency International um, ratings, we want to make sure that nothing changes and it will be a while before that shows up. So we need a proper review of the state of our public sector to protect all the strengths that have been there that we all benefit from. I call Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It 